It's been very exciting this year to be able to focus on a small cask project. We did a, a collab with Fine Ales, um, I think that was in January. And we worked on a 3.8% really sessionable, bright, light Simcoe Amarillo Pale Ale. Um, it's always great to collab with breweries who are just really brilliant at certain styles of beer. We kind of did it with the lagers last year, like Braybrook, a Utopian, and Stu Mostov as well. If we want to, want to engage with a certain style and we don't really know exactly how to nail it, then of course you want to collab with people who do. But what we are certain of is that we love cask ales and we want to get really good at making them. Um, the other beer that we worked on early doors this year was a 4.4% uh, golden ale, mosaic and strata. This one has now morphed into our fully branded up beer called Argyll. They're both 4.4, same hops. I think they have minimal tweaks in the recipe. It's got a nice little golden hue. It's pretty saturated with mosaic and strata, so it's a bit dank, a bit berries, a bit of grapefruit. Soft, but you know, you can session on it. It's got a good assertive bitterness. Um, Penpole is the evolution of that Fine Ales collab. So um, we've switched over to uh, Citra as the star hop. Um, it's very, very pale, got a bit of Vienna malt from Germany to just give it a tiny bit of a golden color, but it's mainly extra pale malt. Um, it's bitter and dry, um, quite an assertive bitterness, but it comes across like grapefruit. You want to keep going back for more sips. Um, and then we worked on uh, a really exciting beer, a be our version of a Best Bitter, um, and this is now called La Manva. This took about three, three goes, I think, for us to be really happy with it. Um, we've settled on the Verdant yeast. I think we started with Verdant, went to Chico, back to Verdant. In fact, all the car scales are now Verdant yeast. Seems to be working the best. Funny that, it's a car scale strain. Um, so this best bitter is uh, mainly Golden Promise and then it's got some crystal malts, a couple of crystal malts in and then we've used amber malt from Simpsons to give it that really nice uh, like digestive biscuit vibe going on and a tiny bit of black malt to give it some colour. Super pleased with that one, latest batch, I was drinking quite a few pints of it just over there on Friday. The final one of the sort of core cask range that we're going to keep brewing is Burnt House. This one is 4.6% and it's our version of a traditional British or English cask porter. We're really chuffed with that one, like version one came out and I think pretty much everyone I've spoken to at the brewery has said don't don't fiddle with it, James. So I'm probably not gonna fiddle with it. It's pretty roasty, pretty ballsy for a 4.6. Um, it's made up with uh, chocolate malts. It's got some nice caramel malts in there. Um, yeah, it's just pretty decadent, but roasty, assertive, good bitterness, slight astringency, but it's soft and sluggable. Yeah, you just wanna, you just wanna keep drinking it. It's probably worth mentioning that we're trying to approach car scales as we are with the lagers as well. We don't, we don't want to reinvent the wheel. We're trying to do the style justice. So, you know, don't expect big, hazy, New England style pale ales just being served out of cask. That's not what we're trying to attempt. We're trying to do the style well, do it justice, really great conditioned cask ales. That's it. So that's where we're at with the cast project so far. Um, we're looking at upping the volume of uh, pen poles specifically, but we might rotate that um, into the new year. We're just very happy with the quality of them. Um, and yeah, like I said earlier, it's a style of beer that we love, so let's make more of it.